Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Yuan Chen from Apple Cloud Infrastructure Team. Today, I'm glad to present our work on enhancing Kubernetes scheduler for diverse workloads in large clusters. It's a joint work with my colleague Yuan Xu and many collaborators from upstream community. This is the agenda of my talk. I'd like to start with an introduction why we need to extend and enhance the existing Kubernetes schedulers. Now I'm going to discuss and present a few use cases, how to use the scheduling framework to develop new features to support stateful applications, batch jobs, and improve scheduling performance in large clusters. Then conclude my talks with a summary. Why is native Kubernetes scheduler is not good enough? Let's look at the history. Kubernetes scheduler was designed to mainly support stateless applications. It used a port-by-port -port scheduling strategy and applied some simple scheduling logic. Also, its scheduling decision is based on some optimal strategy. It means it choose the nodes, scoring the nodes, and choose the best nodes to be assigned to a port. But if we look at today's workloads, there are many more other workloads like stateful applications, spec jobs, machine learning, deep learning, and HPC applications start to run in Kubernetes clusters. They, to some extent, require advanced scheduling from GAN scheduling, topology awareness, advanced beam packing. Also, the Kubernetes cluster size are increasing very fast. Today, we have seen thousands of nodes of clusters, tens of thousands of nodes of clusters. The performance is very important. Also, as the, we run more diverse workloads in Kubernetes clusters in a multi-tenant environment, a single scheduler policy or strategy cannot meet the different requirements. One size does not fit more. We need to support more customizable policy and algorithms for different workloads. So here just a partial list of the new scheduling features that we see very important to support today's workload in Kubernetes clusters. Firstly, I'd like to, so how do we end, uh, develop the new scheduling features? I'd like to give a quick overview introduction of the scheduling framework, which provide a very powerful and a uniform mechanism that enable us to write custom logic to extend and enhance the existing schedulers, scheduling logic and workflow. So if we look at the flow here, from a port submission to a port finally placed or assigned on a node, it has to go through a many steps or stages. So the scheduling framework provide a API for each of these and extension point before and after each of the stage. For example, before the filter stage, which basically is find the feasible nodes that can run a nodes or the scoring stage and give a score to a node and rank all these nodes to choose the best nodes. So the scheduling framework provide this API, and we can leverage this and use this in the mechanism to create and many different kind of the scheduling, new features and custom uh, scheduling logic. Compared to existing approaches to extend and develop a new scheduling policy algorithm, the scheduling framework is highly extensible and customizable because it the plugin is part of the scheduling free, the, the native and the schedulers. So we have only a single schedulers. 
and can use this and cache and error handling. So it's provide a much better performance and better and handle and uh, errors. Finally, because it's run as a single scheduler, so no conflicts or risk condition that is inherent in multi schedulers. Here is a, a summary of compared to existing or old way and to extend the Kubernetes schedulers. Use just the change the code. It's definitely not recommended because it's not compatible, cannot and very difficult to, to incorporate the new features or new versions of Kubernetes or use the scheduler extenders. But the key problems here are one, it has very limited extension point. Basically, it can only and run extender after the filter stage and also after the scoring stage. Also, it's run as a separate service or web hook. The communication overhead, deserialization, serialization, very high. The third approach is just to run and a separate customer scheduler alongside the native scheduler. The problem with this approach is very hard or difficult to coordinate the scheduler, scheduler decision conflicts. So it will introduce the risk condition so far and uh, it's still an uh, open question how to solve it in a larger scale and the production systems. By contrast, the scheduler framework and provide a uniform and very lightweight and fine granularity extension mechanism. You can customize, extend the scheduling flow logical algorithm before and after each stage of a scheduling cycle. Also because it's run and built into the scheduler binary run as a single scheduler. It eliminated the serialization deserialization overhead and can offer much better performance. So now let's move to look at some of the use cases we never use the scheduling framework to develop a new feature to support stateful ports, batch job, and improve the scheduling performance in large clusters. So first use case is, is about uh, new features to support some stateful ports which require a static or fixed IP address. Uh, this means whenever a stateful port is assigned an IP address, it should and have this IP address during its entire life cycle. This is uh, not an uncommon requirement. We have seen and in many and uh, end user environments have this requirement either for the legacy and uh, maintain the compatibility with the legacy system or simplify of some application and the logic. This will require and, uh, some changes to the existing scheduling logic. So firstly, we have to track this IP information. At least you have to know and which and uh, stateful ports already assigned on which IP address. Also, depending on how you manage your IP address, if it's a static way IPAM and assign a fixed number of IP address to each node, you have to make sure you track this map from the IP address to the node or node to the IP address. Finally, during this and the filter stage of the scheduling and the decision, find the feasible node. We have to check, make sure, and we assign the support to the right and the node if it's already have an IP address or if there are still free or available IP address on a node. So if we look at how we implement this and using the scheduler framework. The simplest and design implementation here is we have to introduce and two plugins or extension point. One is for the pre-filter. During the few free filter, basically we have to sync up and make sure the scheduler have the right and the correct information about the IP state as well as the IP reservation information. The second is uh, it have to check and uh, classify a port into three different categories. 
And one is a stateful port, new stateful port without allocated IP or existing stateful ports with a IP and a regular port, just stateless ports. Then the next plugin, new plugin is during the filter stage. The static IP scheduler has to do some additional things. So for regular ports or stateful ports, it needs to check whether or not and uh, this node or a rack have still available free IPs. Then reject the nodes if it doesn't have any available IPs. But if it's a stateful port, then it have to make sure, right? The allocated IP and the node actually match means if there are some static IP already and assigned to a node and the allocated IP should be available on these nodes. So on the right side, this is the code segment just to show how we could implement this static IP stock uh, scheduler plugin. This is the uh, example of the filter plugin. So as you can see, it's uh, quite straightforward, uh, simple. So compare with the existing approach using the scheduler extenders as a web hook, the scheduling framework plugin provide a much simplified implementations. Also, because it's running as a lightweight plugin without managing the, 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 the event cache itself and a much easier handle errors, so it's much more robust, stable, and also easier to maintain and manage. Finally, without running as a separate component, without the marshalling, demarshalling overhead, the performance can be improved significantly. So here is some a benchmark performance result. On top is the webhook implementation, the percentage of the time spent on the predicted logic extender. It's measured as the percentage and over the entire scheduling algorithm and the time. It's almost up to 50%. By contrast, the field plugin only take up to 4% of the scheduling algorithm durations. So it's a very and significant performance improvement. Next, and I'm going to discuss or share a new scheduling features to support the GAN scheduling for batch jobs. So many in the batch jobs and like uh, big data workloads, Spark, machine learning, deep learning, require GAN scheduling, which means give a group of the ports, scheduling all of them or none of them. So far, because the existing native schedule only supported this port by port group, it's missing these features. So one of the solution we already have in the community is a lightweight co-scheduling plugin. It was originally proposed by Alibaba, Qingchang Wang, and his colleagues. During the last few months, and we have been working very closely with the communities to improve and enhance this co-scheduling plugin to better support the GAN schedule for batch jobs. We have the collaborators from Alibaba, Apple, IBM, Tencent, and many others. So the idea is it introduces two labels. The first label and just define a group, you name it, and like my here example, my batch jobs. The second labels describe and specifies how many, what's the minimum number of the ports should be scheduled as a group. So in order to support this scan scheduling, we have to introduce a multiple extensions at a different stage. So first it is for sorting the ports. When a port is submitted to the Kubernetes, it has to be sorted in a scheduling queue. Instead of doing the port by port and the sorting, the plugin makes sure the, the ports from the same group are sorted together and avoiding and it interleaved and across the different port groups. 
The second uh, uh, addition is to check and create a port group managed by the co-scheduling plugin. So make sure we have we know which port belong to a, which port group. Also, it's verify whether or not and the minimum number of ports in the class can meet the port group and uh, minimum requirements then can reject the ports earlier to save the resources. The third plugin is because now we like to support the port group scheduling and we cannot bind a port after finding a node for it. We have to just reserve that port. So the reserve plugin also should have a timeout mechanism. Make sure it won't occupy the resources forever. The fourth plugin is this permit plugin. It's check whether or not the ports belonging to a same group already reach its minimum number of ports to be wrong. If it's metered ports, then we allow all these scheduled ports move to next stage to the binding stage to basically to start and creating the container supports to run the systems. Also, we have to manage these port groups and make sure the deletion of port group, clean up the port group. Also, if they are timeout, we have to clean up the port group as well. All these parameters can be customizable based on some parameters. So in a summary, this and the co-scheduling plugin provide a simple mechanism to run batch jobs to, as a group, support this and gain scheduling requirement by many batch jobs. It also supports to define a port group across the jobs and deployment. And there are some mechanism to make sure the port group can be cleaned up and we need to delete it or time it out. Also have a nice and error check mechanisms. So here is just the example and the policy file. Define a scheduling profile to support the GAN scheduling or co-scheduling. So here, as you can see, is we just need and add this co-scheduling plugin for the different stage the sort stage, pre-filter stage, permit stage, and reserve stage. Also, we can customize the parameters how to manage the port group. For more information, please visit the scheduler plugin in the repo. And also, the users, we welcome users and also contributors. So moving forward, there are not of the interesting or more advanced features associate related to the co-scheduling. The community and uh, is working very hard to address or look into these issues. And uh, a new proposal or PR just to try to improve this and enable based uh, co-scheduling to a uh, port group CRD based uh, implementation. Also, we are looking at uh, some more advanced customer preemption for example, when you preempt to evict a port from port group, should we evict the entire all ports from the same group or just a single group? Then it may violate violate the minimum number of the ports requirement defined in the gang, uh, the port group definition. Also, can we improve the utilization if we don't want a large port group reserve the resources and block? some small port group from running. So what about introducing the backfill strategy and a more advanced rescheduling strategy? Also, finally, as we can see, there are a lot of new requirements on this and the port group based management. So can we introduce a more general, generic and sorting plugin, tree and even a single port have a port group consisting just a port. So we can manage the port or port group in a uniform way. 
So for more information, and you can look at uh, some of the discussion and uh, the, the issues and uh, the cap. The third use case is, is scalable scheduling. How to improve the performance, schedule performance at a scale. We have seen uh, many very large scale and clusters with thousands of ten thousands of nodes. Also, there are a lot of large jobs or services running in such clusters. Each have thousands of or ten thousands of ports. For some, the real time interactive workloads, the auto scaling is important to quickly scale the number of the ports for service to handle increasing workloads. So all this require very good performance scheduler. But unfortunately, today Kubernetes native scheduler performance can be limited by its port by port scheduling algorithm and also the optimal placement strategy in very large scale clusters. To address that, we have made two proposals. The first one is, can we customize some key scheduling parameters for different workloads or different tenant to better perform, balance the scheduling quality and performance? The second one is, instead of scheduling a port, port by one by one, we can assign the nodes to a group of port at a time. So first thing, let's look at uh, customized scheduled parameters. So one of the key parameters that have a big impact on scheduling performance is called per percentage of nodes to score, which determine how many of the nodes that the scheduler should check and score and rank them. So for example, here is a benchmark results experiment. So if we run this experiment in a 2000 node cluster, 5% of this parameter value means we'll score up to 100 nodes. So if we find 100 feasible nodes, we just stop search and rank this 100 nodes and choose the best one. 100 means we'll look at up to the entire cluster up to 2000 nodes. If we look at the results, on the left, the graph show and for very simple strategy, the 5% and 100%, they don't have much difference, can reach 120 ports per second. That's the maximum throughput we have seen so far. But for some ports that re require advanced placement constraint, like a affinity, anti-affinity, 5% and 10%, 100% show a huge difference almost a 3x difference in terms of scheduling throughput. To address that, we propose a per profile parameter idea. So the current, this percentage of nodes to score is a global parameters. What we proposed is to have a per profile parameters. So that way, we could assign different percentage of the nodes to score to different scheduling profile. Then different workloads or tenant can assign or use different scheduling profile to better meet their scheduling performance and scheduling quality. The second idea, the proposal is to score and assign the nodes to port as a group. The key idea is we can concede a group of homogeneous ports with the same resource requirement as a group. Then we just need to score the nodes once, assign the top key scoring nodes to the ports at a time. To implement that, we need firstly add a port group sort plugin, which is similar to the co-scheduling plugin. Sort the port group together. The second plugin is the group score plugin, 
which will apply this and top K scoring nodes to the K ports. But this is still in a design phase. The challenge is how can we support this port group as a scheduling port? Because the current scheduling framework, we can customize the scheduling logic before and after each scheduling stage, but uh, it's still impossible to customize the scheduling flow logic itself. For example, can we skip a port for a certain stage or to customize some uh, processing logic there? But this is a very hard problem because we have to make a good balance and have good trade-off between the simplicity, robustness, and the performance and advanced features in the scheduling, scheduler design and implementation. Okay, so we have and discussed the three and use cases and how to develop a new scheduling feature to support the different use cases. Finally, here is example. How can we put together, create a scheduling profile to use all these scheduling features? So here we show a example policy with the four different profiles. Each profile is associated with different plugins. They have different names, different plugin. The only constraint is the Q sort plugin should be the same because they're only a single scheduling plugin. Then for different profile, we can define different plugin associated with this and the scheduler profile. So sticky IP scheduling, co-scheduling, default scheduling, or an integrated scheduler. This one, we can use any, combine all these three different type of the plugins together. Also, we will see and we can set different percentage of nodes to score for each of the profile. Then different workloads, different tenant, different users can specify different the profiles for their workload to better meet their workload performance and scalability and scheduling quality requirements. To summarize, we have seen an increase in needs for new features in Kubernetes Scheduler. The schedule, scheduling framework provides a very powerful and generic mechanism to enable us to develop new scheduling features. Many of them are already available and are under development. Last but definitely not the least, the community collaboration is the key. The work we have presented today is the outcome of close collaboration with the upstream community, especially the SIG scheduling community. More users and contributors are highly welcome to join the community. For more information, please visit the scheduler plugin repo. We'd like really thank the contributors in the upstream community, our collaborators, Wei Huang, Abduna, Gerenha, both co-chairs of SIG Scheduling, and Qing Chang Wang, Kai Zhang from Alibaba on the co-scheduling and Elastic Scheduling contribution, Wei Dong Cai from Tencent on a CRD-based co-scheduling. Finally, we are part of the Apple Cloud Service Team. For more information, please visit the Apple Virtual Booth and we are hiring Kubernetes engineers from the core Kubernetes infrastructure to platform to application layer. Thank you very much.